So we have to mic these uh, beautiful drums up. Yeah. Do you have a FET 47 mm -hmm. for the kick? Um, it'll be fun to do that on the outside and maybe something kind of more aggro on the inside, like a... D112, D12... Uh, yeah, D12, D112, D1, either one. Uh, D112, yeah. I think 57 top and bottom and snare is fine because we can here at Sunset Sound. What, like maybe 87s or 67s on the toms? Um, I usually go for 421s, but if you want, you can do um, like 414s, whatever you want. Do we have enough tube mics that we could do that on the toms? What tube mics were you thinking? 87s, 67s? I'll check real quick, yeah. I mean, I think so. We only have two toms, right? Yeah. Yeah. If cool. not, maybe go Al Schmidt and do 414s. Okay. Did you, what do you want, uh, 67 or 87? What do you prefer? Let's see what you have first. Oh. 67 would be ideal. And okay, cool. Eight seven later. Overheads. Mm -hmm. What have you got here? Um, let's see. We could do 251s. We can do uh, 67s. We can do C12As. Let's do 251s. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I do this thing. It's an Eric Valentine thing. I love putting like a 47 kind of here with the capsule pointing down at the kick drum beater. Okay. So if there's a way to do that, that'd be great. Mono kit. Cool. And hat can be, you know, like a 451 or something. Yeah, I've got one pulled already, yeah. Great, mm -hmm. great. Did I forget anything? You want to Maybe do a rooms? Ride or no ride? I think it's okay. We don't, we don't need a specific ride. Let's use that AEA R88 for room mics. Cool. Love that. Do you want to? Okay, cool. So, um, and I think that should do it. Sweet. Sounds good. Okay. All right, cool. Well, uh, I'll get all the mics pulled and set it up. Okay, awesome. Cool. Okay. So the uh, 47 FET is a really good mic for a lot of good low-end detail for like basses, kick, things like that, maybe like a floor time. So I'm just going to try to place it just, I usually go between the center of the kick and the outside, so somewhere in the middle to start, and then I can move it from there, depending on how it sounds. I'll usually go just maybe like two fingers away from the actual head itself. Got my roll off not engaged, but I do have my pad engaged, which is nice, so it's going to be about 10 dB. Yeah, so that's that mic. That'll be good. And then we also have another kick mic that we're going to set up for the inside to get the beater itself. So let's see what we got here. All right, so this mic is the D112 and it's a uh, great kick-in mic. Captures a really nice attack. And I usually will throw it inside of the, uh, inside of the kick to get the beater. So hopefully there's a hole cut out like this. Usually they're already cut out. This one looks like it's a custom cut out. Just gonna get a sandbag just so those stands don't fall. And I do this a lot when I'm uh, recording, you know, drum sets for kick mics. These little guys, they tend to be sometimes lighter than the microphone, so I'll throw a sandbag on the back just to make sure they don't move. And sometimes the kick will eventually move forward as the song progresses because they'll be hitting the beater. So, um,. Yeah, it's nice to try to even use them just to keep the kick in place. Yeah. Let's see, plug this guy in. The wall panel. So I always plug into the wall panel first. Just because I plug in here. Then when I run the cable out to the mic, all the excess cable is over here by the mic and not at the wall panel. So it doesn't really create a mess or anything. And then if you want to move the mic over here, you've got all your extra cable. So I kind of have the mic off to the side just a little bit, but still pointed at the beater, so it's a little off axis. And I'm kind of just doing that because the hole itself is off axis, so I don't really have a direct line 
right in there, but I think it's gonna be good. Okay, cool. So that's the kick right there. Now we can move on to the snare. All right, so we're gonna use 257s on our snare, one on the top, one on the bottom. I'd like to come across on the snare, right about here at an angle. I try to do the same thing I do with the kick. I try to hit in the middle, you know, between the middle of the snare and the side. So somewhere around here is gonna be good. Yeah, something like that should be good. Bottom snare is a tough one. It's a little tricky to get it in there. It's Got to kind of sneak it around the stands, but do what you can. You usually don't want to have it contacting any stands like that to cause any vibrations or anything, so you got to kind of find the best avenue to get it in. Let's see. And then I'll try to place it in the same spot that I placed the top snare mic. Or at least similar. Cool. I'll probably throw a sandbag on that one too, because that stands a little flimsy. It's kind of light. Cool, and that should keep it stable. Next thing we have our toms. Let's see. So we're going uh, audience perspective. So you're going to be seeing the drums, or you're going to be hearing the drums like this. So our first tom mic is going to be on the left, which is our low tom. So for the tom, it's going to be similar mic placement. There's the snare. I'm going to try to aim somewhere right in between, right in here. Just want to get above the tom. You want to get us, you know, pretty close. Should be pretty good. And these uh, 67s are tube powered, so you've got your power supply here. I usually like to set it up close to the wall panel so that I don't have a far mic cable run. So now I'm going to connect this guy to the panel. Let me turn him on. It's the same thing as the other time. Try to capture it somewhere in the middle, right around here. That should be pretty good. Turn it on. Let it warm up. All right, our next mics are overheads. So we're gonna do uh, 251s. So these are great overhead mics and these are really nice for vocals, piano, things like that.
And these 251s are another tube mic, so they have their own power supply. All right, I'm not gonna place this mic yet. I'm gonna set up the other side, and then um, I'll show you a little trick of how I do these guys when I mic them. to do for the overheads is that I'll try to get them equal distance away from the uh, center of the snare. So I'll just use a mic cable to measure. So I'm kind of just going in between the hi-hat and the snare, favoring the, the snare, I would say. And I don't think they'll be hitting those guys when they play. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna measure this distance for the other microphone. I should be somewhere about right over here. So we have a rough measurement. I actually think I'm gonna come a little bit higher on this guy. Maybe a little bit further towards the hi-hat. Measure it again. So this one we can bring down about a few inches. Great. So the reason that I set up my overheads like this is basically I'm just trying to create a nice center image. If I go off the, uh, the center of the snare, that gives me a fair center of the kit. You know, your crash symbols in your hi-hat, you know, there's going to be a lot of action over here. And, it, and it's funny, if you measure off the center of the snare, it tends to set up your overhead so that, you know, you're, it's a little bit higher over here and you've got some distance and it's going to bring this one down a little bit lower so that there's almost an equal distance. As you can tell, the kit kind of slopes. So that's another great thing. And this also helps with phase two. If they're like an equal distance, I can kind of get a good judgment there when I'm uh, checking for phase. All right, so for a hi-hat, we're gonna use a 451. So this is what I, uh, I like to do is throw a 10 dB pad in there just to give us a little bit of room. Um, sometimes the hi-hat can get a little intense, so this will kind of help out. And the same thing for this symbol compared to the positioning of the toms and the snares. I'm gonna try to, you know, from the center to the outside, Somewhere in the middle there. I feel like that's going to be a safe bet for a starting point. So something like that, and then just pointing straight down at it. Maybe even come back a little bit. Right about there. All right, the next mic that we'll put up will be a mono mic, mono 47. Not tracking any more guitar, elect uh, acoustic guitar, so I'm gonna use this microphone.
So this mic is gonna, uh, it's a mono kit mic, it's gonna rest right above the kick. And we're just a little bit inside towards the beater. All right, so our next mic is gonna be this uh, AEA ribbon microphone. It's a uh, stereo mic. It's also a ribbon mic. At Sunset Sound, our board's normal with phantom power. So we've got these cloud lifters that allow us to use ribbon mics with phantom. It's basically bypassing. So this mic is going to give us a stereo image of the kit. And it should also be a good reference point when placing things panning-wise, like hi-hats and things like that, Tom likes. So since it's a stereo mic, there's going to be one cable leading to two outputs, so I'm just going to make sure that I have the correct panning, so we're in audience perspective. This would be our left side. The number one is on this side, so I just need to make sure I have them correct over here. And this one says number one, which will be left. Number two, which will be right. And now I'm just gonna come out of the cloud lifter and into the mic panel, and we should be okay from phantom power. See, that's our last mic, so we should be all set. So just two things, this looks Right. Let's just pull. Let's pull the AEA back a bit. Okay. Maybe back two feet. Okay. I just I love the sound of this room so much. I really want to. Totally. And um, if we can, the forty-seven that's over the kick drum, mm -hmm. maybe come either from in front or from that side of it. So it's it's uh, kind of like pointing at me. Okay. Sure. In terms of the, the angle of the mic. Let's see. And the rest looks great. Cool. And you measured from the snare, right? For yeah. the overheads? Yep, they are measured from the snare. I love uh, recording drums with these headphones. They're called Ultraphones. And they are made by a drummer who I think is... I think I'm getting this right. I think he's the drummer in Steve Miller's band. And he just makes them himself. He doesn't want to have to start a big business. They're made to order. I discovered them in Nashville, and they're great. They're just like, you know, like hunting headphones to sort of reduce the oh, sound gosh, of the gun. Oh, shotguns and stuff like that, yeah. And I actually made my own pair of that. I went to L.L. Bean in Boston when I was on tour with Katie Lang in the early 90s and bought some hunting sort of, you know, decibel-reducing headphones and put yeah. a pair of Sony V6s inside of them. Nice. Oh, that's funny. But that's the best version I've ever heard. Nice. This company, you can get them. I think, I think you can find them online. And it sounds good, too. Hmm. Pretty full. Also good for, like, if you're playing guitar in front of the amp. Oh, yeah. That's another Because the guitar always sounds a bit cooler when it's right in front of the speaker. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this way you don't blow your brains out. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get sounds. All right. Let's start out with our kick mic.
right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is that my kick in mic, which is my D112. So that was the first thing that I started out with. I really want the attack of the beater on this one, so right now I popped over to 5K. I'm just playing around with that. I've got it up about 4 dB just to see how that sounds to try to, you know, just get that beater going. So let's take a listen. So now I'm just trying to see if there's any high-end frequencies that I don't want, if I can get them out, if there are any. I think it sounds nice as it is. All right, I'm going to move on to my uh, kick-out mic, which now I'm going to try to get that lower end of the kick out of, now that I have the attack of the in mic. For my kick sound, it seems like I'm favoring the uh, the low end mic a little bit more than the uh, the attacking mic. So the the 47 FET, I'm gonna favor that a little bit more. Yeah, let's see how that sounds. A good thing to do would be to check the phase, uh, so I'll go through that real quick. It was a good thing we checked our phase because they were on phase. So now they're okay. All right, let's move on to the snare mic. Do you know if you're going to be doing uh, the rim shots during the uh, song or do you think it'll just be more? I think it's probably this. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. Okay, great. Yeah, let's go for that then. Yeah. Okay. So from this rim shot, I'm going to want more attack. So let me just try to see if I can find that with this EQ here.
cool. So for my snare top, I'm just going to be bringing up uh, 3K about 2 dB just to give it a little bit more snap. Uh, let's see what the bottom sounds like. So for the snare bottom mic, I'm actually going to be looking to capture the actual snare on the bottom. So it's not really going to sound as pretty as the top one, but it's going to be useful. Cool, and I just brought up a little bit of 7K on that just to grab that snare, the actual snare, and uh, that's all I did there. Let's see how they sound together and if they're in phase. And they're most definitely out of phase, as you would guess. That snare bottom and it's a snare top mic. Let's hear it with the kick. All right, you want to do a little bit of a uh, tomage? Can you go for the floor, Tom? Yeah, I just added a little bit of low end to the floor tom. All right, let's go for the rack. What I'd love for you to do is uh, just get sort of like a basic sound and then I'll put down a groove and I want to come in and listen to it and we'll we'll tweak together. Otherwise, I can't really tell what's happening. I, okay, sounds but, good. But you know the room. You've done this a lot. Uh, let's Yeah, just follow your nose and then I'll come in and we'll check. Sounds good. Okay, uh, let me get that uh, rack tom just one more time. Okay, cool. Um, now I'm just going to go for uh, the hi-hat, so let's grab that real quick. Okay, now I'm just going to go for the rim mic, so let's just do a, you know, the, whatever beat you think you'll be playing. Those are just overheads, and I think that sounds pretty good. Just the overheads. Just try to make sure on the R88 that the snare sounds like it's in the middle. Okay. You know? All right, I'll focus on that. Feels like it's a little bit to the right, so I'm just gonna move the uh, microphone.
Got to move it a bit. Yeah. Cool. That's much better. Great. All right. Um, I just got to take a few more seconds to check out the, um, you know, the overheads and stuff, and then we'll be in there. Well, let's let's focus on this guy too. The uh, the horizontal forty seven. Sure thing. I can focus on that right now. So what I love to do with this, Zach, add a bunch of like 100 hertz, 80 to 100 hertz, quite a lot, like 5 to 8 dB, and then either compress it before the EQ or after the EQ, but a lot of compression, like pretty aggressive. Okay, maybe something like a uh, distressor or something? Anything. Okay, great. Yeah, it could be an LA-2A, it could be anything. Okay, cool. It's almost like a parallel drum thing that you kind of blend in, you know? but it's live. Gotcha. All right, well, let's see here. So he recommended an L2A, so I think we'll go with that. All right, so I patched that in as an insert. On this console, we have uh, insert points. All right, so yeah, I'm just compressing that uh, that mono kick mic about 5 dB with that LA-2A. I think that's doing a good job. Okay, great. Do you want me just to do a take and then you can come listen? No, just let me uh, just put down. I'll just play for free. Like, great. I got uh, you. Just put me in solo to a click and something like that. Okay, I'll come in and hear that. Perfecto mundo. How are we doing? Good. Um, I don't know if you want to get in there and solo stuff or if we yeah, want to just Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. So I would say just start from that point on. Our okay. kick in was just a little bit weak on that first pass.
I mean, that's kind of the most amazing drum sound, just the, uh, the mono, the 47 over the kick drum. It's so cool. That's all we're hearing right now. What EQ is happening on this kick in mic? I've got the 550A. What's it? Where, so I kind of have just like 5K up about six. That's about it. I think maybe let's cut it flat. Cool. Cause, okay. Because it's sort of a, it's probably going to be a more mellow thing. I know I was playing harder at one point. Yeah. But okay. But I think it's going to be more chilled thing. Got you a more laid back. Okay, I great. Think. I would less, just take it out. Less attack on it. Okay. Yeah, just let's just pop it out. Yeah. Because I think this the mic by itself is going to give us what we need. Today. Okay, great. Uh, let me try. Let me try pass. Cool. Sounds good. Let's double check these mics. Just give them one last look. Make sure they're all good. <laughs> they look cool. All right. You can um. This guy. Yep. You can add a little more low end to it. Okay, sure. And um, and squash it even more. Cool. Really think like something not subtle that I can blend in. Okay. I mean, I can do it later. With Let's do a quick, uh, just like a 30 second pass. I'll just tweak that and then we can jump in. Do you want to do that? Okay, cool. So I'm just going to double check my uh, my mono kit mic here um, and just see if it's got enough flavor for what we want. So let's take a listen to it. Okay, cool. I'm ready if you are. Let's try it. All right, here we go. Woo! Mm -hmm. House numbers, zip codes, birthdays.
Oh yeah. Let's keep that. Let me do another one right now. Sounds good. I love drumming in this room. I can't explain it. I just. It is amazing. <laughs> something about it that it's like playing with a great band. It just I feel like I don't have to drum. It's weird. Alrighty, here we go. Let's punch right there in the bridge, please. Okay, let me come hear that. Cool, sounds good.
zip codes, birthdays, and airplane rolls. I could never pass them by. I, 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 I rearrange them, add them up, multiply till I find luck. Anything to call it a sign. Well, maybe I'm out of my mind. I see my lucky number. So I did two drum takes. I think the second one's probably a little more, although there's some fun moments in the first one I think I'm gonna grab, but uh, the bulk of it's probably gonna be the second take. I thought Zach got great sounds. He knows this room. He's worked here for three years with Joe Ciccarelli and lots of other people that come in here. This is one of the world's best studios and he really knows what he's doing, which is a huge help for me. I just made a few little changes to stuff that he had done, not much. Came in, listened to it, rebalanced a little bit, found that I didn't need the AEA room mic. I just muted it, took it out, and uh, loved the sound of the 251s as overhead, so turned them up. I'm probably going to ride them a bit in the mix. One of my favorite things to do when recording drums, and I give full credit to Eric Valentine, who taught me how to do this. You take a 47, it doesn't have to be a 47, it can be any kind of you know, mic like that, um, kind of a nice full mic, and you put it horizontally over the top of the kick drum. Here's the edge of the kick drum. Here's the kick drum pedal. Here's the beater. You angle it like that so it's in cardioid and it's pointing down at the beater. So it's sticking out maybe like that over the uh, the rim of the kick drum. And then when I'm recording it, I like to add low end to it, like 100 hertz, 80 hertz, and then squash it pretty liberally. It could be an 1176, it could be a distressor. I think we used an LA-2A here. And then quite often on playback, I will do that again. I will squash it even more because I'll think it's not quite enough. I want it to be a sound that's probably unusable on its own, but it's the kind of thing that I will blend in to taste. I added an LA-2A, UAD LA-2A to squash it even more, and then added the UAD Pultec and added 3 dB of 60 hertz. It's just fantastic, and, and blending it in, it keeps, there's something... Eric discovered about mono mics that you can crank them, but they never give you that huge washy kind of overtaking thing. It still stays very focused and gives it a lot of depth. And this is a great trick for adding depth to everything on the drums, to the snare, to the toms, definitely the kick drum. And you just blend to taste. And sometimes I'm riding the level of that. Here is that mono 47 over the kick drum, just as we recorded it. And I'm going to bypass the two plugins that I've added to it. So it's in solo. This is what we got. And then I'm adding, looks like just a hair over 3 dB of 60 hertz. Let me show you what this does in I'll solo all the drums and then I will bring up I'll start with this fader down and then I'll slide it up as it plays
it just adds this beautiful, very sort of Eric Valentine like depth, kind of gorgeous low end. Eric's really into. Oh, I mean, his company is called Undertone Audio. You know, not overtones, but like the the notes that get formed below the actual primary note from weird the weird confluence of different harmonies and undertones. They're called. He's really a, a master of everything, but he's really also a master of the bottom end, and I find it very inspiring. I seem to be drawn more toward trying to get the top sounding right, but something that Eric, just listening to his work, always reminds me of there's nothing more satisfying than hearing the low end really done right. 